Welcome back guys, I'm here on no man's land once again um, building a new farm and uh, I thought I'd share what I've done so far building the property out here to the left and I'm going to make it as realistic farm as possible Got the mailbox out the front here. Uh, well, done a lot, lot of landscaping. Let's put the whirly birds on because we're in a rush. We're in the police vehicle at the moment. Cool beds in the way here. I don't think we can sneak around him. I highly doubt it. Oh, I don't... Yeah, I didn't think we'd make it around. But we did anyway. So here's the home. Oh, do I just back up in the driveway? It's really actually a walkway, but... Get rid of these whirly birds. back down the driveway here. We'll go and have a little look around. So, got a bit of a hedge running all the way around. Got some nice distinctive trees. Got a big spotlight up there for the backyard. You'll see why in a moment. Done a lot of decorating. And, uh, Somewhere for the kids to play just here, just off in the corner. We'll go down the back in a moment. The main bedroom. You can go inside this house, which is really cool. I don't know why every door and every gate opens outwards in this game. I don't understand it. Doors open inwards, not outwards. This, uh, this, this is the view from the main bedroom out to the front of the farm. It looks... Uh, Looks pretty good. I did all the decorations and that myself. A side view of the home. It's just got some, just some basic natural uh, landscaping out there. Manicured lawns. We've got our shower in here. We switch the light on and off. We'll, have, we'll, we'll go in and have a look. The maid has uh, been keeping it pretty clean. You can see the kids playing out there. So keep an eye on them. We've got a nice big kitchen. Um, the bedroom's got a sleep trigger and a clothing trigger in it. This is the laundry. The laundry actually needs a back door on it, so there's no back door. So uh, to go around the back, we'll have a little look out here. We've got a swimming pool. Put a swimming pool in and oh, I forgot to put the barbecue down so this is the view from the kitchen window I could live with that so like I said I, I try to make it as real as possible so we're gonna go out there and have a look and then I'll do a quick little fly over and uh, then I'll start putting some paddocks down so pretty nice house there's only 17 slots so this is why the spotlight's out here. Nice little walkway. Got the pool here. And uh, we come out here on warm summer's evenings and have dinner out here. And we've got the shed and the wood there, but I, I didn't put the fireplace down. And the barbecue. So got it all nicely fenced off. Just some basic, uh, to me, less is more landscaping. So we've got some chairs to sit on, sit by the pool with a couple of drinks and whatever. But it's easy to overdo the landscaping. So kind of to make it as real as possible. Um, we'll have a look at the overview. This is from the back of the house. So all we've got now is the driveway at the moment. I wanted to put a little ziggity zag on it. 
I'm not going to clear all the trees out like I, I have done with previous builds and I didn't want a dead straight driveway so just put a little curve in it just for something a little interesting that's why I've got the tree muncher on we're, we're going to uh, we're going to have to choose some trees down before I, I put all the animals down and, and get into the fields and so yeah less is more more, more effective a few different colour bushes around the trunks and then just one large bush coming from each corner just to give it a little bit of you know something something other than something other than just you know jam pack a whole a whole lot of bushes in so we're just going to do just a little bit of detailing that I that I missed here little bits and pieces not much shade, not much sun hits under these bigger trees. So you can sort of thin the grass out a bit around it. Makes it look a little bit better. A little bit more realistic. Could probably have just a, a little bit of grass. Just at the, the base of these trunks. So this build I'm going to go as realistic as I can. I've um, cheated in four million dollars. Um, and that's where I'm going to build, but I just wanted to get, get a head start on this one instead of doing all the logging and then spend the next 45 hours of the build just trying to make money. I turned it in 4 million and I've got all the equipment I need here ready to go. So uh, we'll be doing cotton, doing sugar cane, we're doing everything on this build. And I've got all my field work prep ready to go. I've got a harvester. Um, so yeah, we've got everything we need. Um, <coughs> by the time I put the animal pens down, uh, we'll be pretty much broke. So I'm going to get some fields down next before I do any animal pens. I haven't quite structured how I'm going to do it, but I know I want fields out the front here. So when you come up and down the driveway, we're, we're working the fields on each side and i want some fields out here but i want the horses nearby so i will i am going to do horses on this build i'm kind of thinking about putting them up the back here somewhere um but because i've done all this detailing to the house i want to make sure that i can i can work a grass field at the back here so i still get to see it as i'm working because um uh, I spent I spent quite a few hours getting all this right nice and square and make everything fit in and uh, make sure the pool was right so got all the hedges as close to square as I can but this game with its grids it's really really difficult to to get these to go straight so a couple of them look a little bit wonky donkey you know but it's the best I could do um, going off what what how the game runs with the grid lines so then we've got eatery at the back here. Let's change the tiles there just to mix it up. A little bit of copper stone into the shed. And uh, so that's the house done. And with the landscaping, like I said, less is more. The, the less you put in, the more effective it is. Um, probably not so much from the overview like this. It looks bare and empty, but this is manicured lawns. But if we go down on on first person it, it looks a lot better um, kind of a bit, bit more realistic so I'm, I'm trying to make it as natural homestead as possible um, I put a diving platform over here somewhere to sit down and kick your legs over the edge and sip on a martini while you're sitting by the pool if that's your thing and um, 17 slots for this house. <coughs> Excuse me. Kitty's got somewhere to play here. I'll put all these pot plants down, all this decoration as well, just to add to the home. Put some nice little night lights right at the front door. Um, there's a sleep trigger in here. And we can change clothes as well. So it's kind of got everything. The view from the, the front of the house looks pretty cool. So I'm going to try and make this as realistic 
as possible, but I, I cheated four million dollars in. So the four million dollars, I can just say I got an inheritance and uh, decided to buy some property and build it. So there's nothing else at all on this map. So basically, it's episode one. Really, you could say, and depending on how it goes. I just want to get rid of this bush here. I don't like it. Want that gone. So, um, yeah, the idea is to get some fields. A field on each side. And I'll, I'll probably run the cattle, the cattle pens down here somewhere. Sort of down in this area. Uh, I always do cattle, so this build would be no different and just far enough away from the home that I can get a, a field in here so first thing I want to do is just get rid of some of the trees in here so I can I can get a field on each side um, we'll start around to the right hand side Kind of helps. If I switch to the right implement. It's nice and easy off the back. So that's the only thing with with no man's land. Usually, uh, I'll get rid of those trees straight away, and so the whole map would be clear of trees but I want to keep the trees on here and just kind of try and make it because uh, all, all the other builds I spend probably about 500 slot counts on trees so I don't want to do that this time so I'm going to try and leave uh, I'm going to try and leave the trees spending all my slot counts just get rid of this one and I'll I'll get this field up and away this tree much is pretty cool I think I'll leave that one down in the corner usually this thing you don't have to stop so sometimes you do, most of the times you don't. Uh, we'll get rid of this one. That one in the corner I'll leave. Turn this into one big field up the front. I've only fenced it off to the edge up here. So as the build continues, I'll, I'll work out exactly where to put everything else. Just going to build it one step at a time instead of trying to do one big build in one big go. Just going to kind of pace it out, try and get it as realistic as I possibly can. I think that'll do us for this side. That little tree can stay there. That one in the corner can stay there, so turn the muncher off and get it out of the way. Uh, usually when I do this map, I usually uh, run a road up here, and cut a track through the trees, and then when I get to here, uh, I usually put a bridge across that hooks up over here and uh, do all the landscaping to it and then I run a river under it so I don't know if I'm going to do that as yet um, I don't know, I always like to try different things on this map I've, I've built this map so many times uh, literally hundreds of times since FS19 I've built this map literally hundreds of times 
yeah, I, when I've finished completing a map, then I've played it a couple of times. I get bored and I do what I'm doing now and <laughs> and, uh, and start building another one. I can't help myself. I just enjoy building more in the game than what I do farming. Uh, I like farming, but I like building as well. So we'll just jump over, get our, uh, get this fella here cranking. So this is why I cheated in four million. Uh, this thing here, it's a cultivator, but it's also a plough. And so we're gonna, we're gonna bring this up into the yard. Uh, it's got an 18.2 width on it, so it's reasonably fast. Uh, ideally, I'd like to have a nice, decent field on each side of the driveway fence. So as we drive up, kind of get a bit of a view. I might actually continue this road straight on, and that'll give me a guide. And I'm using. I'm using this riverbed, it's kind of just a bit different. I haven't really used the riverbed before, and so I'm going to give it a crack, see if it works out or not. The hardest bit is trying to keep this steady on the grid lines, and which is like that, extremely hard to do. And we're going to leave it there because I, I think I think we want to start heading down this way. So uh, it's kind of given me the boundary anyway. I'll just tidy this edge up if it lets me. It's, it's extremely difficult using a controller to <laughs> try and keep straight lines. Uh, I've dug in a little bit deeper there than what I should have, but that'll do. Um, probably use this little section here to come in and out of the field so I'll just open up a bit here I'll just round these edges off I can always fix this up a bit later just, just to get the idea of Because uh, I, I want my fields enclosed, so that's just going to give me kind of what it is that I'm looking for. Run a little bit of dirt just along the edge. A little bit of uh, wear marks through there. So, and we'll get cracking on the field now. So as we're up, coming up, the fence here will continue down. And we're going to head into the field through here. And something, something that I always do before I... before I make any field is... kind of put a guideline down just a rough one and I want to make sure I've got enough room for the the workers to turn around because they're imbeciles so we'll probably go down to here somewhere yeah we'll even bring it back a little bit probably about here and that will pretty much be uh, probably a little bit more It'll pretty much be the field, something like this, something close to that. So I'll just fix up this bit of uh, just fix that back up because I like to have wild grass minus the bushes. Could actually 
probably open this up a little bit more this side considering it tapers off and opens up there so be able to open this up just a little bit more get it out to here somewhere I just use these as guidelines to kind of to do the outside edges just to line up to um, and that's definitely we definitely want to cut in that row no higher I'll just go over to plants and put down some more grass here now just clean that up so with my fields I don't like to have cut grass and then the field be next to it it looks too clean I like to have uh, wild grass so now I'm just gonna L1 and triangle so I'm uh, creating the field And I'm just going to do a rough outline. Let me just start there. And the little knobby on my bonnet, I line it up with the grid. There's uh, there's grids, grids here. If you look, there's I don't know if you'll see it, but if you look down, there's grid lines. And I use that edge of my bonnet right there on a grid line, and that keeps me fairly straight. Uh, the worker will take over from here and clean up that bit between the fence and what I'm doing here. So I'm just doing a rough outline. And then when I put the worker on it, he will he will make it completely square. Or whatever shape I put down. He'll run with the grid line. And surprisingly, it stayed relatively straight that doesn't always happen and pick that up there back a little try and line up a grid here I've got one pick now and off we go it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy because the the work is going to make it completely square when I set him onto it um, the worker will create the field as long as you've got a line so if you've got a plow that makes one single row. As long as you've got that one single row down, you can put the worker on it and he'll make everything really square. And as long as you get the basic outline done. And we'll cut that there. <coughs> line up with the edge of this here I reckon and off we go again try and keep it <coughs> excuse me you probably keep this as square as possible still, we're still heading to the right so oddly enough it stayed reasonably straight Just to give the effect um, of coming up the driveway, there's a nice big field on each side. <coughs> this is the bit about FS22 that I enjoy the most, is just building, building farms. Um, like I said, by the time it's finished, kind of go, yeah, right out. <laughs> And, uh, and then I go on and build another one after I've played it a few times. I don't really stay with the same one and I think 
I think half of the reason that I do that is because I'm never happy with with what I've built. I always want to change it or make it a bit better or a bit more realistic or whatever. Um, the other builds I used to just start logging first straight up and it would take me like 30 hours of gameplay and uh, only to when the build was finished I'd never play it again so I just treated in money this time and it's uh, not ideal but I didn't fancy starting this doing logging again right so now we got the square down finish this row over here as far as I can and lift that up and I'm gonna have to do a full full arc u-turn and then I'll get the worker to line it up and send him on his way I'm just gonna hit the fence no I don't want it too damn close to the fence. Jesus. I'm coming out about there somewhere. Alright. I know I wanted to eat a little bit of this section out too, so... And now we put the worker on. And he's going to make that right, that outside edge to the right, dead straight. So as long as you've put down some, it doesn't have to be one big massive plough line that I did like that. As long as you put some sort of um, field creation on, the worker will follow it. Now you can also use in your painting tools, um, you've got these here. And, and that'll give you a ploughed state, but I don't like using that. I like to do it this way. Just, just how I like to do it. So with these workers, they won't stop. They'll keep going until you stop them. So I want him to run out a border all the way around like we've already done. So I have to manually stop him about now. And then I'll line up this bottom row and, and we'll get him to go straight across here. I think I, I might, the game's going to be stupid at the moment, but I think I might need a little bit more out, another half a length. Uh, and problem is I don't want the idiots, workers, to hit the fence and get stuck and go, you know, and carry on like they do. The workers in this game are absolutely pathetic. All right, we'll send the worker off. But sometimes you just got to line it up a little bit yourself. I'm not even holding the controller at all. And I find that this is the best way to do it. And I also like that... Um, what the hell? Oh, that's just because of the long grass. Or it's because it's right on the edge of two rows. So I'm going to take it back again and just eat a little bit more out. Just a little bit more. Because sometimes if you're right on the edge of two of the grid lines, it keeps jumping between one grid line to the next. Like I said, it's, uh, that's the programming that they've done. The game mechanics of it, run off grid, grid lines. So hopefully this will square it up. A lot of effort for a tiny little bit of work, but... Just gotta, just gotta square this up fractionally. And about, about there. Yeah, okay, work is underway. That should square up now, that right hand side. You can see I was right on the edge of the grid line, which is why it cut in a little bit here and 
not everywhere. So now we've got a nice straight line on the right hand side. Once again, my been dog's been dead quiet all day. As soon as I come live, he decides that uh, he wants to carry on a little bit. And we'll stop him there. I may not have to run up this side actually because I think I think that square oh no it didn't. Just missed out on the squareness by a fraction, so I'm just gonna eat a little bit of this out. Just overlap it by a little bit. way and we kept that nice and square hopefully we're not between two of the grid lines it looks like we are it shits me to tears that tiny little bit there that that's enough to to make me want to re redo it and move the grid over move over to the next line of the grid a little bit more because I can't handle it just all right not easy Being a perfectionist. Hard to live with me, I'll tell you. Alright, we'll send the worker on his way again. Get going, stupid. And hopefully, we've just bit enough off the edge of that grid. We know now. Yeah, we should be right now. It should be a nice straight line on the right hand edge. That'll do, it's close enough. So it's gonna be a, not a huge field, but it's gonna be decent enough to, to get a decent yield. And when we're coming in the driveway, we'll be able to see the crop on each side. So, I'm not sure I can use this space here for a shed or for something else. That rock will stay, and I'll keep these trees in this area. So the worker will slow down when he gets right near that edge. And it's just a matter of timing, hitting the circle button there to get to stop him. So we've now got our line set. And we'll just do our final square for the border and the rest is easy. Of course, never quite lines up. Never ever. So I just used my bonnet there to line up on the grid line, the little silver knob at the front, and it just makes it so much easier. And generally, not not all cultivators and ploughs are the same, but generally this bar, not 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 the rollers at the back, but this bar here is the start of the line of, uh, of, of where the field will start. So I could reverse back, see that line there, and then there's the next grid line right there. So they're close together, but I'll have to back up just a fraction and send him on his way. So some other cultivators are the second bar in. Um, so. I haven't found any that this actually creates the field, the back parts. But it's usually this um, this rear bar here. So let's see how we go. I know I've got to come back just a fraction, and about there. We missed a tiny, tiny, weeny bit. I can't help myself. I uh, I'm a perfectionist, and I can't help it. Well, it's going to stay like that because I'm going to try and help it. This is our last square run. I'll have to manually close it off at the uh, fence end. 
can't do much about that unless I take the fence down, but it, then I have to put it back, it's not worth it. So we've got nice square border, and now we just fill the middle. Thank you. Most people couldn't be bothered doing this too fiddly or whatever, but I like to do it. It's, I get satisfaction out of getting it right. Like I said, I can't help myself. And if I've got it right, which I think I haven't, That's good enough. All right, so now the border's down. All I have to do now is just chop into it. Square it up. And now I just keep a little overlap on the left and doesn't matter, doesn't matter how far overlap you get. So, um, it's a, a pretty wide uh, cultivator, so um, it's a cultivator that creates fields. And it's probably the one that I use most. It's not recommended to use this one um, for a worker when you've already got the fields done, because sometimes they lose the plot and they'll just keep going and they'll create fields across your map without you knowing it so you sell this after you've done your fields or you don't use it except only for uh, only for um, uh, field creation and that's the safest way to go about it that way you won't destroy your everything you've built. So I've got enough gap now, I can just go straight up and down each time now. I'll, I'll probably do one more headland up the top there. Like I say, when if you like building your own maps and, and that sort of stuff, um, what you put in is what you get out. So if you put in effort, you you get out of it what it is you, you're trying to achieve. Um, I've done this build completely opposite to how I usually do. I usually don't do the farmhouse until last. I usually put animal pens down of where I roughly want them, and then I construct the roads and then I construct where I want to put the silos and all of that. On this build, uh, I'll be using the grain bins and the and the augers. I want it to be as realistic as possible. So, and probably then I won't get I won't get too bored um, just rolling up the side of silo and, and loading things in and drop and picking things up straight out of it. I'll have to actually use the auger and go to a bit of effort and I think that'll probably keep me interested as long as I'm happy with the way I've built it so like I said I'll just go stage by stage step by step and, uh, and that should keep it more fun so it's not that I don't like farming, I do love, I actually love farming, I just get bored with the map because it's just fine that I've never actually built it. Um, or, or I always play the map and think, you know, I don't like this and that that I did with it and I always try and change it a bit. But sometimes you can build it to a point where you have to destroy a whole lot of stuff you've built just to come back and change it. I'd rather just start a new map and try and get it right from the start. So I'm going to do this one slowly and not rush it. 
and with my other builds when I'd put the animal pens down obviously I'd put animals in so then I'm under pressure to get fields down I'm under pressure to start trying to get feed for them and then it just um, your build becomes very rushed and what starts off good ends up turning into a, a bit of a rushed mess so I'm just going to take me time with this one now and I've left all the trees which is uh, not usually what I do on no man's land so I usually cut down a, a couple of thousand trees but this time I'm going to try and keep it as country like as possible and as realistic as possible so I'll treat it as, as if I owned the property and what I would actually do to it that's how I'm kind of looking at it from this angle this time and hopefully it'll satisfy me enough to uh, keep playing it so you just let the worker go but you always have to stop him and turn him around um, only when you create the field not when you generally work and stuff Okay, that's because I was just over the grid line. And we'll get the worker underway. He'll automatically straighten it up. If I want, I can stop the worker, and then he's already got the straight line done. And I could just run down the end on auto, but it doesn't matter. I cheated the money in, so... Um, I think I'll just lease a whole bunch of gear to get rid of the remaining money once the animal pens are down. I cheated in a bit more than what I wanted, um, but anyway, anyone who says they've never cheated money in, they're full of shit and they're liars. It's everybody at one stage of playing farm sin has put down government subsidy signs, everybody. And if they say they never have, I'll call bullshit on it, because everybody has. I have probably two more strips to do back down and then up the top again and this one will be done and I'll choose some of the uh, trees out over there and I'll put another field on that side I could actually even like run a stream uh, just along the edge here I could run a stream so it doesn't dig into the side of the mountain because that looks pretty woeful when you try and make a river and one side of the bank is like 10 metres in the air and the other one's flat on the ground, so... Um, I've built this map that many times. I know where all the flat land is. I know where all the lumps and bumps and hills are. And uh, that, that kind of helps me a bit. Send the worker off. As far as bridging this across and running a road, I could even run, if I do do it, I could even run a road up through the top of the hill, just chew the centre of the trees out so you go between the trees and then run a bridge across here. You obviously chop all that land out there and cut through it and then run a river under it and get rid of this road. Um, and that changes the, the whole map. So to get from one side of the map to the other, um, you have to actually go across that bridge and it just makes it a little bit more fun, a bit more enjoyable to, you know, if, if you like driving your, your crop around. Um, personally, I like to travel if I'm doing sheep with bales. I like to travel to the sheep point, which is a fair distance from the farm. I, I like the farm to be away from all the sales points and all the buy points. And I generally like to make a bit of a town. You put multiple different houses down and give people, you know, an acre around their property. And each property I use as, you know, someone on their property 
like that house, my house there, for instance, could be where I buy fuel from. Um, so I have to travel to that property to get fuel, you know. I, I give every, um, every place that I build, I, I give it a reason to go to it. So it has a purpose for being there, not just for decoration. And that's generally how I like to play. I'm not sure about the riverbed road. I, I think it, it's okay. But if I don't like it later on, I can always change it. There's no big drama about that. I'll just back this up a bit. I'll do a quick save. I'd go and sell the trees, but not on this build. I'm uh, doing things a little bit different. I think the house has come up pretty good. It kind of looks real. The driveway could be wider, so I can probably fix that later. But I'd be happy if I lived in that in real life. Hell yeah. Get the rifle out, drop that balloon that's floating around in the air there. Get rid of that. Hopefully it'd be full of full of people. Get rid of a few of them as well. Get this munching going. So yeah. You're out of there. I'll put uh, three trees in there. Place it in the centre there with a, a couple of different ones. We've got a nice, decent sized field to start off with. I think that'll probably be a grass field on that side. Got that fenced off all the way down there. I just want to have a quick look. Uh, this is the cow pen I'm going to use. Is not that one. Where is it? Not that one. This is the one I used to use all the time. Uh, but that's not the one I'm going to use this time. Is it this one? Uh, that's a cow barn. Where the hell is it? Oh, it's this one here. 76 slots. But it has the biggest paddock um, out of all of them. So I also want to be able to see the cattle when I'm working the fields instead of just looking at the front of the building. So I want to position it in a way that which will probably be facing away like this. So when I look at the home, I can see the cattle in the field. Um, I think somewhere about there would be pretty good. Let's uh, try and get the edge of this lined up with the fence line there. I'll bring it out a little bit. We're overlapping with trees, so that's fine. Might shoot these two out, and a couple over there. Oh, sometimes it, you 
if you leave it on auto, it will leave a small little stump in the ground and when you go to plough it to create the field, that little stump will be left there. So sometimes you've just got to reverse up a fraction. Get rid of these two and those three little ones on the left and we should be pretty clear then. trees are going to go, I may as well eat them up. Probably run a grass field around the back of the home, so that front paddock probably won't be grass anyway. So we'll turn that off, I'll put a nice long strip of grass down here. Um, this might be the horse area, or I might put the horse area on this side. Um, I just want to put the horse barn up the back and then have a couple of small uh, little paddocks, just some small ones to chuck them in on their own. What I'm going to do now is pretty happy with that bit. It's the next one. So just chew this out a little. As for the, the painting, you can always change that any time you want. If you're not happy with it or it's not not accommodating, you can change that easily. So for now, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. I want that to curve in a little bit. All right, and because I can't help myself, A little bit of dirt around. And then I'm going to fence it. There we go. The road will continue down that way. I don't know where yet, but we'll just run this along here like this. Sort of break the edge up and I'll finish the fence and we'll continue with white, the white picket fence. I'm going to cut this in a fraction because I want to make sure that the harvester can get in. Instead of say square, I'll try and curve it around a little bit. That might be alright, just a small opening like that. I'll figure out what I'm going to do on this side yet, whether I'll put that road through, so I'll just start over here. I'll continue that fence line out. here because I'm going to want to have access into there. So that will do us for now. So I'm going to I'm going to have to put a gate in here somewhere to give access here and make all this grass. And so when I'm doing that, I'll still see the horses in their pen. And when I'm doing this field, 
the obviously the cattle and just makes it a bit more interesting oh. let's do a borderline now something like that from a bit of an angle chopped into that a little too much this won't be the biggest of fields can move over a little bit more But the reason I'm keeping it straight is purely for the workers because they're absolute morons. Kind of along that row. Just clean this up. I'll cut into it anyway if I wish to. I think I'll start on this row first. And that one's pretty good. I do want to leave a little bit more leeway here. Yeah, so I think I think that'll be fairly fairly good. Just drop it, pick it back up, and then L1 and triangle, just to be sure that it's going to create the field. This won't be the biggest of fields, but it's still, still a field that's on the edge of the driveway, so purely for the aesthetics of it. going to roll over a little bit just so there's enough to get the worker uh, onto it on the outside of it of course the game's going to go all ridiculously fucking retarded right now it is farm sim after all and we've got a grid line in front of us we're just going to keep that on the bonnet Generally, I'll watch it for a couple of seconds, and if it stays on the grid line um, without drifting a little bit left or right, then it's fine. Otherwise, you can tap the steering wheel just gently left or right. And so, I use the worker to clean this side. I want to keep that rock there, just driving in. It'll look pretty cool with a couple of trees around it. So I can't use the worker yet, because he'll go no field found. I'm just up there. Okay. These things turn like so unrealistic it's not funny. When you need it to turn, it doesn't turn. And as soon as there's a collision to be seen, this game pounces on it and forces you towards that collision at all costs. It does it every time. And as far as I'm concerned, I call that B-grade shit programming. That's what I call it. You know? Giants need to come up with a new DLC. I don't think they've got quite enough DLCs to pay to play. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Not very fond of Giant software. For the main reason that 
they can't even put up their own servers. If you try and play with other people around the world, you've got massive lag going on. It makes it impossible to play. It destroys all the fun out of it. You know, it's like they, all the money they've made out of all the farm sim games, all that money they could have invested into servers, but instead they didn't. They didn't bother. They didn't bother. Alright, that dude has lined me up. So now all I have to do is just auto cruise and it should keep the dead straight line all the way through. Should do. And I just don't touch the uh, steering wheel in any way, shape or form. And that will give us a dead straight line down here. I am going to stop for a second. Because I can see... Come off it. I can see that... Uh, I'm going to need to paint a little bit of wild grass on this side because I don't want clean, I don't want clean grass showing next to the line. I, I want the wild grass to be the edge of the field. All right, and off we go. As long as I don't touch the steering wheel, we should be fucking bastard. Send the worker, he'll line it up, he'll stop and go no field found any moment. This is still him going, can't believe he's still going. Generally they would have stopped by now. There you go, now he's going to try and turn around. But we just automatically cruise it forward and it should stay on this straight line. Maybe it's my controller that has got a slight little uh, deviation on it. Maybe it needs to be recalibrated. It's behaving itself so far. So we want to stop this somewhere about here. Mark this around. Drop it down. It looks to be right. No, it's not. Back a little bit more. There we go. Send the worker out. You should square off that end. That's right, keep going, stupid. You're nearly done. Alrighty then, he's already square. So I have to use this paint first because if I was just to paint wild grass over this, you'd still see this through the wild grass. So we'll get rid of that. And I'll come back with wild grass. So as you can see there, you can that, yeah, that line's already square, isn't it? I'll just take this over a little bit more. And the worker should clean all that up. Righto. And yeah, you got to muck around a little bit, just on a corner here and a corner there, but really it's it's not it's not that much of a hassle. That little what you put in is what you get out of it. You know? I I've built so many so many maps that I just I know that if you put effort in you'll end up enjoying it more. Actually get this right over so that'll be cool. the worker on his way. We got lucky there. And 
Beautiful. figure that out later actually. I'll, I'll see I'll see what I'm going to do there before I choose what choice I'm going to put down. And now we've got a nice straight border all the way around. It's not the biggest of fields but it could be a potato field out here or sugar beet and you get quite a big yield off that so even though it's not a monstrously large field it can still use it to your benefit. And then we just square off this um, this next little bit here. Move him up there. And you see, it won't pull around now. The other time I didn't need it to pull around and it just make look how quick it and sharp it turns now, because it knows I'm trying to line up. This shit programming people. Fucking B grade. We paid top dollar for this game can't even provide us a server that we can use around the world, you know. If Rockstar were to do that, everyone in the community would complain, but everyone seems to let farm sim giant software get away with just dodgy shit and just sell your pay-to-play downloads, you know, like, God, it just gets up my nose how they do that. It's one of the most expensive games of the year. Did I catch that in time? No, I didn't. I've got room to widen it by a fraction, so I could either go back with the green paint and just lightly edge that in, or I can run the worker with a tiny little bit of overlap there. I can even go a fraction wider than that, but I, I try and keep it about there. See the way it, it goes on a 45 degree angle, like, <laughs> please. Absolutely pathetic. When they made FS22, it may sound like I'm whinging. They should have put a whole new new framework down. You know, that's what they should have done. They're using old technology from, from FS15 still in FS22. They should have updated and done it properly and given us servers that we can use with anyone around the world. And unfortunately, they haven't, and I think that's where this game lacks a hell of a lot, considering they've, they've sold it being a multiplayer game and really all these DLCs to have other people riding in vehicles with you and stuff and yet you try and play with someone halfway across the world and you've got two to three seconds lag in everything you do you try and steer left it doesn't steer left for like three seconds it has nothing to do with your internet and it has everything to do with the dodgy servers that they've chosen to use and that's a real letdown that's uh that's a that's just a massive big let down there. It shows that lining their pockets with, with cash is more important than uh, fulfilling the game how it should actually have been. So they've, they've fallen way short, way, way short. And of course it would do that to me. Look, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about this edge. I'm not. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to. I'm just going to leave it. All right, send the worker out there. I can go and get a beer. I can chill and uh, just enjoy building. Building this. <coughs> oh. My demon has raised its ugly head again. Ah, uh, that is the best sound in the world. The 
the sound of the cat coming off a King Brown. Hell yeah. Cheers, people. May you enjoy your Friday evening. Stay safe on the weekend. Right, eh? We're nearly down our second field. And I can't wait to put the cattle pen down because that, that's uh, all of my license plates say livestock because I love running livestock in the game and to give giants a pat on the back what they did with the with the animals was fantastic except for the self-watering bit I don't really like that um, but the way the animals lay down and move around and that now much more better much more realistic and uh, a lot more enjoyable to see so you know They've been around for many years and FS19 made them a lot of money and they should have reinvested it. And that's why I have a gripe about it. Because this game's potential is 10 times what they've delivered to us in FS22. This game has got potential just through the roof and they just fall short. And it's disappointing for someone who's loved the entire FS series absolutely love it to death and I really had a lot of higher expectations than what they delivered to us in FS22 and kind of sad to see really um, the way they've let us do gates fantastic absolutely brilliant the landscaping tools took some time to get used to but now I can use them like second nature and they're absolutely brilliant um, 10 times better a hundred times better than what FS19 landscape and tools were and it did take a bit to get used to it but all I did was use no man's land on a test map um, that I use for um, for all new mods that come out I put them on that map with other mods that I have and see if there's any crashes because they don't know how to test mods. They claim they do, but they don't. They have no idea. There's mod testing giants, you suck. Absolutely horrible at testing mods. Especially for console. Um, I'm not talking about PC. I'm on console, so. Console's different and it's extremely, very touchy with console. Everything you do, so you get game crashes so, so damn easily get one conflicting mod and you just yeah, yeah woeful absolutely woeful um, this is the party house I want to I want to do a bit more to it but I don't know what yet it'll come to me it'll all come to me uh, this was actually supposed to be a, a, a walkway to the front door not not to park a vehicle there but the vehicle just fit up there so I did that anyway um, I'll put a couple of trees along here and a couple of trees along in this area. Maybe maybe more of these native ones like this, not the mega tall ones, maybe some of the smaller ones like these ones. Um, I don't know. I don't want a water channel in there. But uh, You see, it was easy to make this pool just because of the landscaping tool um, is, is just so much easier to use. So much easier. And these fences, just absolutely brilliant. It's like, every farm I made in, in uh, FS19, I didn't use fences because the slots were just way too high. Now, you can fence the entire, you can, you can fence to your little heart's content. And it's just really, it's a game changer right there so right out decent field here we'll put a grass field around here and we'll shape that up around the back and I think we'll put horses here so probably run the track along here and then L shape it towards the horses here somewhere that's what I reckon <gasps> 
we'll have a slip lane here that might be a good place to put a shed for some some equipment just want to make sure that everything i bring in will be able to make the left and right hand turn which i'm pretty sure everything that comes through there's enough to come and turn late to drag everything around painting thank you and i'll just do a just a dummy Do a bit of a dummy road. Probably run it down this way. I'll have this as a shed area. Get a bit of a larger shed in there. Just have a straight road that comes through. I think that might be alright. I'm just doing this little little bit by little bit. Tune into that. It, it's really hard to stay within these grid lines when we're doing this. Uh, I think it's time to go to a dirt road. We'll keep this as a main thoroughfare. And the main driveway. I think we'll go to dirt now. To branch off down here. I think we will. I just want to get a little bit more plant on this side. Be about there. Square it up. Go across the sculpting. Go as big as it goes and as flat as it goes and I'll just make sure this is flat which it is I, I know this map really really well I know where all the flat bits are and whatnot and I think we'll just use dirt we'll just use dirt what does that look like oh, a bit yucky nope I like uh, how Alien Jim put these new textures in. It's one of my favourite modders for sure. It doesn't quite look right. A little bit darker. Oh, that might be okay. A little bit different. <coughs> Just have a quick look at the dirt texture. No more wet mud. I'm going to use this one. Oh God, it's hard to keep this thing straight. We'll just take that down to there. Sorry guys, I'll be one second. I'll let this dog of mine out. He's trying to bark at me. Come on. There you go, mate. Off you go. Poor old bastard. I think that might be alright actually. And I'll put like a dirt trail. Uh, not mud. I'll put like a dirt trail in here. I'll open it up by three. See if I can't keep this relatively straight. Into the 
towards the working area of the barn. That there didn't really work out how I wanted it to, but whatever. Didn't work in this way. And I, I always come back and detail all, all the tracks and that, so I just do this as a guideline. And uh, then I'll get grass in the middle here. Just to, I don't know, just how I like to do things. Most people could not be bothered doing what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, this is just the way that I like to do things. And because I play in first person, it, it just looks so much better when you're driving around in first person. I put my um, my screen view on 60 degrees. It standard, I think it comes at 70, 75. Yeah, which, which means when you're sitting, which means when you're sitting inside your vehicle, you see the full steering wheel and half inside the cab. I like to be a lot closer to the windscreen. It's, it's more realistic that way. Let's uh, put our first shed down. Let's have a look. I don't, I don't like these, these sheds. I don't like many of the sheds in this game. I usually use these and build my own. So I use these as the canopies, and I go into silo extension. No, sorry, I just go into silos. And these are build your own bunkers. And I use these as, as the walls and I build my own sheds that way generally. It gives it more of a um, uh, individual kind of look, but I mean, these um, these English sheds are pretty cool. There's a lot of room in them. This one here I don't like that much. This one it's the same as that one. These are the ones that I like. There's a lot of room in these, and there's a not. Oh yeah, that's the that's the other one with the single door. We got little bits around the back here that you can kind of role play and stuff with. I don't mind those ones. These these I did use for a while, but um, those witches hats. Even when you move them. As soon as you log back on, they're always put back in there, and that annoys me. You can't get rid of them. Same as that one, that's just a different colour one. So I used them for a while. This one here was okay, but the, the diagonal bars on each side have collisions on them. And so you just waste two bays, unless you just use something to park long ways in them. So I stopped using them as well, same as that one. actually got that downloaded because I went onto a mate of mine's map. <laughs> you yeah, know. This one here is a drive through. This one is an awesome, uh, these, are, these are pretty good. You got a, a big door at the side here and you got the two big ones there. I do like these very much. So I don't want to get a whole bunch here. Um, oh, be back in a sec, guys. You just get a blank screen for a second.
Right, I'm, uh, I'm going to come back and finish this. So I'm pretty happy with what I've done so far. I'll come back on episode two and continue on. If anyone wants any tips or anything of how I do things, um, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and uh, take care. Yo, Gretch is on as well. I think Gretch is on a. You there, Mick? Come under the wrong one. Uh, Gretch is on, he wants to go and play golf. You want to come and join in? He lost his call. Yeah, I played with him the other night. He did really well, eh? So, 